Since my last video, I've done some thinking, and I've changed my mind about a few things. One, last time I put the cart before the horse, disparaging the foundations of my old identity without really understanding how else you would create one. When I realized that I didn't actually know how to define identity, I turned to Google and I found a really awesome article from the Stanford professor on this very topic. For me, the essay solidified and presented a compelling definition of what personal identity is. Personal identity is a set of attributes, beliefs, desires, or principles of action that a person thinks distinguish her in socially relevant ways, and that a. the person takes a special pride in, b. the person takes no special pride in, but which so orient her behavior that she would be at a loss about how to act and what to do without them, or c. the person feels she could not change, even if she wanted to. I know this definition sounds a bit abstract, but in context, every piece makes sense, and if you're interested, I would highly recommend checking out the essay for the full idea. In my last video, I was basically searching in the dark, looking for some way to recognize myself under these new circumstances. This definition gave me a structure that I desperately needed. Two. Here's something I said last time. A vast majority of my time was dedicated to these activities, such that my life, and thus my identity, were defined by them. You know how John Green talks about imagining others complexly? Yeah, here I had failed to do that with my own past self. I want to clarify that while, yes, my activities were important to me, it really wasn't the only thing holding my self-image up. To borrow a phrase from the earlier definition, I also had a quote, special pride in my small nuances and quirks, like the way I listen to music, dance, or think about interactions. These were unique aspects of me, and in high school, I knew and was proud of that. Here's another thing I said last time. Anybody could have done the same activities I had done and be a totally different person. That's not completely true, because even within those extracurriculars, I had a unique role and a distinct way of doing things. And in high school, I knew that. I oversimplified my past self. I unfairly blamed my feelings of loss and uncertainty on my past actions, and not on my current situation. Three. This statement sparked a lot of responses. I think I need to stop identifying myself by external factors. I need to find a new core so that I'm not so freaked out when everything around me changes. One of my friends wrote me a really insightful email on this, and in it she wrote, Sometimes I imagine how hard it would be to understand color as someone who sees everything in only one shade. If everything is blue, we have no way to describe blue. Descriptions are born of comparisons. Blue? Blue is blue relative to other colors. My point is definitions have a degree of relativity, and identity is contextual. How else can you describe yourself without some references to external things? And I talked to another friend about how relationships are important in self-definition. How, while you can know who you are, it's important to have other people around who recognize and encourage that. And in that way, creating a new friend group is a form of reinvention. So yeah, I can't just cold turkey stop defining myself by external factors. It's kind of impossible. I still agree that I need to learn how to not freak out as much when there's a lot of change in my life, but now that I've explored more into my identity, I don't think finding a new core is really the solution. My friend phrased it nicely. I think more difficult than sifting through where you've been and who you've been up to this point is dealing with the ability to change what comes next. It's like you're a paranormal teen investigator collecting clues and details from your own life, tracking down your future self. What are you going to do? Who do you want to become? How do you deal with change outside of yourself, communities you identified with shifting, new people who have different ideas of who you are? I'm nervous because my life is in a state of reinvention, and that means I have to reinvent and redefine myself, even as that self changes. I'm scared of what reinvention and redefinition will entail. I don't want to lose touch with who I am now. I don't want to forget my past. I don't want to become somebody who I don't like. But I need to trust myself. I can move. I can change. I'm still growing. Besides, I know how to take care of myself, and I have a great support system. Everything comes to an end, and it'll all turn out okay.